And we'll just read the first three verses. Exodus chapter 20. And God spake. And God spake. All these words saying. All these words saying this was after the children of Israel were brought up out of the land of Egypt. God had a word for his people. This is Moses, the man of God, upon the Mount Sinai, getting a word from the Lord. Come on and read. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Yes. Out of the house of bondage. My Lord, whenever God wants his people to do something, all he has to do is start out with that statement right there. You was messed up. You was bound up. You was out there. I'm the Lord that brought you up out of that condition. Come on and read. Thou shall have no other God before me. Thou shall have no other God before me. So here God was declaring to his people what's called the Ten Commandments. And he begins to walk down through. And he talked about making no graving images. He talked about not taking the name of the Lord in vain. He talked about remembering the Sabbath. Keep it holy. He talked about honoring thy father and thy mother. He talked about thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not kill. I mean, still. So these were the Ten Commandments. The first one, though, he put first strategically, and he said in this, thou shall not have no other gods before me. Whatever you do, do not allow the enemy or anybody else to come before me. Appreciate mama, appreciate daddy. But if you're going to have a relationship with me, you cannot allow anybody or anything to come before me. I don't care how successful you may think you're becoming. I don't care how much money you may accumulate. I don't care what you may come or uh, uh, what job you may have offered. Don't you allow anything to come before the will of God. Don't have no other God's little G. Don't make your children a God. Don't go bending the standards of your home because your child want to do this, that, and the other. Don't turn your child into a God. Don't turn your, ch your child into idolatry. Allowing this. Don't back up on the gospel of God because of your husband, because of your wife. Don't allow anybody come before God. Don't let your job come before me. Don't let making money come before me. Don't let anything come before me. Thou shall not have any other. God's before me. My God. Idolatry is to give worship, honor to something or someone other than God. Idol worship is far more than a little statue, far more than something that was done in yesteryear. But idol worship is alive and well. It's putting anything above God. My God. Don't make an idol out of it. So here God knew if you keep this in order, as a people, you're going to be blessed. You have the favor of God upon you. You'll be able, no enemy will be able to withstand in front of you. As long as you keep this first commandment, all ten are important. Keep the first one. Don't put nothing else in front of you. You'll be blessed. So the devil knew that this first commandment was critical. So he set himself out to remove it. We want to preach for the time we have. We're going to take a little different angle this second service. But we want to preach putting God back on the throne. The title is putting God back on the throne. The devil knew I have no hope against this people as long as God stays on the throne. My God. Amen. As long as they keep God first, I have no hope. I got to get that first commandment. And you'll see the children of Israel. We won't be able to go into all of it. But whenever they found another little God and they put that God up. They ran into trouble every time. But then they would humble themselves. Thank the Lord. And they put God back on the throne. My God. Amen. And they'd be blessed. So here we see how important it is to keep God on the throne. Go over to Psalms 93, verse number one. Now, while you're going there, we want to make a point clear. We know that God is in heaven and he's still on the throne. 
Amen. We know that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercessions for us. Amen. Amen. God is still on the throne. But we're taking a different angle and a different approach. We're taking the spirit of the Ten Commandments here. In other words, don't let anything on the throne of your heart. Don't let anything replace God being first in your life. The devil knows I'll get you. If you ever think for one moment, I don't need God. God, get, get, I got this. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make this work. You're going to see the church got into trouble. I'm going to break this down this morning. The church got into trouble when they removed God off the throne. Come on and read. Psalms 93, verse 1. The Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with right with majesty. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself. Uh huh. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. See, when God is reigning, you, you won't be moved. Oh, Lord. When God is reigning, don't worry about it. Just, just keep God on the throne. They may come against you. They may talk about you. You may go through some financial problems. You may go through some problems in your body. But you keep God on the throne in your Amen. life. Amen. You keep God letting him reign over everything. My and God. no weapon formed against you will prosper. My God. Amen. Amen. Every tongue that lie, uh, stand up against you will end up condemned. Every lie that's told about you behind your back. Amen. God will expose it. Amen. Spirits trying to come against your home. Let God reign. Amen. You may go through an affliction in your body. Let God reign. God will bring you through. You may go through some periods of your life where it's dark. But let God reign. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning, my God. Just don't give up. Don't give in. Don't listen to the devil when he says, go back. God is not here. God is not with you. Amen. Go back to sin. Go do something else. No, devil. I'm going to keep God on the throne. Amen. And God is going to come through. The Bible said, he that begun a good work in you is faithful to faithful, perform it. God. Thank Amen. God. God will come through for you. You may go through some storms. You may go through some uh, valleys. You may go through some afflictions. But my God, just stay faithful, stay steady, and God will bring you through every single time. You don't need to worry like other people are worrying. You don't need to have fear like other people are, are having fear. Just stay right in your spirit. Keep your spirit right. Walk in all the light God has ever shown you in your life. At midnight, dot your eyes, cross your T's, do what's right, my God. God will bring you through every single time. He does not lose. As long as he was on the throne, the children of Israel prospered. Nobody, the Philistines, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, or any other ice, they could not withstand the people of God. Mm. And it's the same principle today. God don't lose. Don't, don't you go uh, losing your soul defending the church of God on Facebook. God don't need you to defend him on no Facebook. Just keep him on his throne. Keep the doctrine right. Keep the standards right. Keep our spirits right. And God will bring us through every single time. They fighting against God. They not fighting against Brother Hampton. They not fighting against you. They not fighting against your mother, your father. And they not going to win. Because God's on the throne. That's why we don't bend. That's why we don't shift on no doctrine. That's why we don't bring in no new this or new that, my God. We got to keep God on the throne. That's how we win every battle. That's how we face every foe. So the enemy knows this. And he knows that when God is reigning, it's nothing. When God is on the throne of that person's life, it don't even matter. Mother passing away. She's concerned about each child, but as she processes each child, she sit there. You saved? That's all she had to say. Keep God on the throne. Whatever you go through in life, you're going to come out. You may go through this. Mama's got to go, and I want to see you on the other side. As long as you keep God on the throne, I'm not even worried about whatever could come. Your, you may lose a God, job, but God's on the throne. You may have some friends that come against you, but God's on the throne. Amen. You may not have a whole bunch of money, but my God, God's on the throne and he has, my God, a cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. He'll open doors no man can shut. My He'll God. shut doors no man can open. Amen. Amen. Just keep God on the throne. When God is removed off the throne, destruction and chaos. And I got to fly through this. But the devil knew at the very beginning. My only hope is to get God off the throne. So way back in Genesis, and I'm just going to refer to this, this, way back to Genesis, when the battle first began, first three chapters, 
God created in the beginning. God created heaven and the earth. He's creating this and the other. And the next and this was the first day. The second, everything was in order. Everything was fine. Then he created mankind. And he made mankind a free moral agent. And all he said, just keep me on the throne. Just just be obedient. Who's ever on the throne has dominion, has control, has oversight. And God said, just keep me there. Just obey me. And everything is good. The devil came in and said, how can I get him? He couldn't concoct a woman real quick or bring in some crack cocaine or bring in the lottery. He said, man, I got to get them. I have no hope for this beautiful. They got this garden. They got a beautiful life. They got a beautiful man. They got all of this. I got to get them. I got to destroy their life. How can I get them? He came. He said, won't you eat this? And Eve said, no. We know the day we disobey, death going to come. We're wrong. We, we can't do that. And the devil said, don't listen to God. Don't listen to him. He knows. And he was not fully lying. He said, the day you eat of this, you're going to become a God. <sighs> you're on the throne now. My God, you're on the throne of your life. Now you can do what you want to do. Yeah, you got it. I can't deal with God on the throne of your life. But I can deal with you. My God. I can deal with you. Oh, yeah. Long as I get you to replace God. Oh, thank you. And he's using that same spirit. The Bible said in Proverbs, there's a way that seemeth right. When a person comes to the age of accountability, they get older. 17, they get older and older. 18, now they want to say, I got this. I want to be on the throne. Let me do what I want to do. If I want to mess with this girl, I'll mess with her. If I want to take this little skinny shit, let me do me. I'm doing all they're saying is, let me on the throne. But oh, the reaping. It took three chapters for man to come with this presentation. Everything was in order. Three chapters later, chaos. Utter chaos. Man couldn't last three chapters on the throne. It said, God looked down and said, What in the world is this? Only evil can take. What are y'all doing? What? How did it happen? They removed God. Get off the throne. How many saints' children have we seen? I got this. I, days later, few years later, what? Who are you talking to? What are you involved? What is? What? No, not so and so. What? No, I'm. Uh, uh, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna protect myself. But there ain't no protection for some stuff. Go ahead. You will not be successful. The Bible said, "What shall it profit a man if he gain a whole world?" But lose his own soul. You want to get on the throne so bad. Now we're dealing with a whole generation. On the throne. I'm on it. I'm on it. We don't need God. We don't need God. The Bible talks about a nation that's blessed. Who has the Lord as their God. Our nation was blessed. Our constitution. Our forming of our nation. God. 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 George Washington said we got to remember God. Ben Franklin, we got to remember God. Before we pray, this assembly to bring our minds together, we need, we need God. Every school, every high institution of higher education was founded for the principles of advancing the cause of God. Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, Brown, all these places were to train up young men in the word of God and to send them out. Every school you would go in, they would have in there the math book, an English book, maybe Webster's Dictionary. And let me tell you this. If you ever can get a hold of a Webster's Dictionary from about 100 years ago. Oh, my goodness. Find you a Webster's from like 1930, 1920. You go in there and start reading how God fearing Noah Webster and these people were. And let me tell you this. No bomb ever could come on this soil my god no enemy could withstand us nobody had any uh we were more prosperous than any nation in the history of the world they'd never seen anything like 
the United States of America. But a few years later, after they said, we don't need God in school. Don't be praying to start school. We prayed to start the country. Now you're telling us we can't pray to start school. We weren't wise enough with the wisest men in this country together. They understood they are not wise enough. But now our little children cannot even open their school up saying, Lord, dear, bless our, our school today. Keep us safe. And you're wondering why children now, before they go off to school, they're saying, Daddy, pray that no uh, 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 school shootings are happening. We took God out. We say, oh God, we don't need you, God. Now we're finding out more ninth graders are using drugs than any time in our history. More teenage pregnancy than any other nation. We are, my God, reaping what we're sowing because we decided. 9-11. Few little men. Now we're dealing with this. COVID-19. And let me be clear. Yes, it is a pandemic, but you want to be real. It's a plague. If you don't believe God is behind my God, wake up and see. God will not rival. We talked earlier about God being a jealous God. And these industries that have came up and risen up like they got some big check. We are it. And we talked about four of them this morning. We talked about, my God, the financial industry. America's the wealthiest nation the world has ever known. Don't you realize that no one, if you can combine the next four uh, uh, countries, they couldn't even compete with us. We this, that, and the other. If you knew the truth of America's financial condition right now. Let me tell you, and I don't want to make you afraid, but do you realize who America is in the most debt with? Our number one enemy. Can you imagine if they just woke up one day and said, you know what? Come on and pay it. <laughs> you can do all that talk, tough talk you want to talk. Yeah, no China. This that China sitting back laughing. Yo, you owe me, bro. How you gonna run your? Can you imagine somebody with their chest coming out your house? They owe you money. Yeah. Uh, uh. You owe me money. Then they say, okay, the market is going down, so we want to save the the political systems and this, that, and the other, and the election coming. They say, so we're gonna say bring in trillions and pump it into the market. All they doing? is diminishing the value of your money in your pocket. The more you make of this, that, and the other, the more is, I went to, pay, I went to Honduras, and we got off to a plane, some of y'all was with us. We went inside, I think it was Wendy's or whatever it was. I looked up, and it said for them happy, or you know the meals, one, two, three, four. I said, all right, let me get number uh, two, two. They said, that'd be $748. I said, hold on. You know what, fasting and praying, on this, my Lord, I ain't bring that type of money. Hold on. And then it, it, it came back to me a little bit better. I said, well, here, uh, I got, they said, no, you understand. One of y'all dollars is like 300 of ours. I said, oh, uh, okay. I, I, I may make it back home. I may make it, let me wire me some money. Well, I may, but that's all America is, is doing if they're not careful. Because they're trying to take our markets, instead of going back to God and saying, God, they're saying, we're going to figure it out. God is saying, you know what? All these little gods that y'all got, they're coming down. They're coming down. All these little gods. Then he said also, Hollywood. They're making these Hollywood stars. Saying, it's so bad now, they got what they call reality gods, reality stars. They don't even got no talent. They've never been like to an acting school. They can sing like, whatever, acting. They literally don't do death. If you've seen it, they will wake up in the morning. Oh, what am I going to wear today? Oh, wow. Okay, look at this. I don't know about this one, sister. What about you? You think, oh, that's why I like the polka. I like, you're so lame. I like the, okay, just send you up. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. See y'all next week. Keep up with us. Keep up with us. See you next week. <laughs> Gosh, they got millions. Folk don't want to come to church, but they got millions of people that are bowing. God said, I'm bringing it down. I'm, br I'm letting you know you got to put me back on the throne. My God. We also talked about this athletic world. Just unbelievable. Just worship this that, and the other. Worship will fight you because you live, like I said, I'm, 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 I'm just a, we're the day and night spending their money. God brought it all down. 
like Dagon. Dagon, that little god that they put up, tried to put up the guy, bam, went back down. Bam, hands, feet off on his stomach. They said, no, we're going to get through this COVID-19. We got the greatest scientists and, and Dr. Fushi and such and such, such and such. And they, they can figure out they're the smartest. This and, and they are being honest. We have no clue. Just stay away from each other. No, create the vaccines. We ain't got it. Fall on your face. Fall on your face. You got to put me back on the throne. If you, that's why the Bible said, if my people, which are called by my name. Let's go over to Jesus. Go over here. Go over to Jesus as our example. John 5, 34. So how do we have the power in our lives? The power in the church is when God is put back on the throne. And we're going to break down the sixth seal, how they pray for us. John 5, 34. John 5, 34. But I received not testimony from man. Uh huh. But these things I say, uh -huh. that you might be saved. My Lord. He was a burning and a shining light. Mm hmm. And you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Mm hmm. But I have a greater witness than that of John. Mm hmm. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do. Listen, Jesus was so powerful, not just because he was Christ, but because he kept God on the throne. All while he was here, he wouldn't get caught up in anything else. He was on a mission directly from God. Whatever God would have for me to do. He's Jesus. And you're going to notice through these litany of scriptures that he just said, whatever God would have for me to do. You want to find a person with real power in their life? You're going to find a person God is totally on the throne. Completely. I'm saved. That's why we have to pray, saints. Don't you shout when somebody gets saved and then you don't just sit back. Pray the next breath that they get sanctified. You got to pray the next breath. Lord, that's the power. That's the real. That's how they're solidified. Amen. They've taken the devil off the throne, but the devil wants self to be on the throne. Self, my God, will reduce the power in their life. So they got to let God. No, 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 no. Get self off. You got the devil off. Now let's go back to the prayer room and get self off the altar. You want to talk about real power? That's when the power of the church is real. When we take self and say, Lord, you saved me, but now I want you to burn me up because I don't want my God. We kick the devil off, but I don't want my arm and my leg to end up on that throne. God can't lead you and guide you. God can't instruct you. No power there. God can, God's word is not dictating the affair. You don't pray things through. You're making decisions of your own. Saints of God will be in trouble. We can bring in all we want to bring in. But if we don't get them on the altar where God is on the throne, God dictates the affairs of their life. If God say go left, they go left. If God say go right, they go right. If God say sit down, they sit down. If God say stand up, they say stand up. That's the power. You're talking about somebody with power. It's when God is on the throne. When God orchestrates, dictates, that's why the church of God was so powerful. We don't go by no system. We don't go by no book, no rules. This and the other. We let the where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. So here, Jesus was so powerful because he was humble and he allowed God to be on the throne. John six thirty eight. Read. For I am down, for I came down from heaven, mm -hmm. not to do my own will, yes, but the will of him that sent me. Saints, are y'all seeing this? People want to say, why was Jesus raising the dead? Why was Jesus praying? God was completely and totally. Pray for me, we only got a little bit of time left. But if we get this message, where there's a church, just getting all you out the way. Lord, you, whatever you, Lord, we reconsecrate our lives. Lord, we rededicate our life. We just didn't get clean and get saved and stop doing crack this and the other. No, 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 no. Lord, we want you to totally and completely. You can orchestrate the affairs of my life. I will not go and involve myself in anything. I'm going to be just like Jesus, our example. Everything Jesus did, it was the will of the Father. Watch this, saints. We're going to just follow the life of Christ. It blew me away. The detail that he consistently, he wouldn't even speak. It was the will of the Father. I came to do the will. My only way of being successful is to keep him on the throne. It's not that I don't run off with a woman. I have to sit back. Lord, what are you saying at this phase of my life? 
at this phase of my home, at this phase of my home, how do I raise my children? See, saints, the moment we move God halfway off the throne and say, no, we're going to figure this out. We're going to kind of do this. Any couple that don't have God completely on the throne, we pray everything through. We just don't make a decision. We will not make financial decisions. We will not just go on vacation. We're, God, you are on the throne. How do we raise our children? You're on the throne. Whatever you say, Lord, I trust you. That's where the power is. That's the power of the church. Come on and read, Brother Frank. For I came not down, I came down from heaven, uh -huh. not to do my own will, yes. but the will of him that sent me. Come on and read. And this is the Father's will which has sent me. My Lord. That of all which he hath given me, yes. I should lose nothing. My Lord. But should raise it up again at the last day. Thank the Lord. Lord, help us to keep those that he bring into camp. Let's pray for them. There's nothing more encouraging when we hear the saints saying, I called the new, I called this prayer, I called this saint, I called an older saint. I called, I, we don't want to lose nobody. We don't, we, we, we're just doing the will of the Father. Amen. We may have to uh, work this any other to pay a bill, but our whole focus is the kingdom. Our whole, you're talking about a church on fire. Our whole premise is the kingdom. Our whole mindset. Our whole mind. Lord, you don't want, you don't want Jesus to lose any. Lord, I don't, we don't want to lose any either. Lord, we're praying. Day and night. Father, they got to make decisions. If y'all only knew some of the decisions that some of them have to make right through here. And you, you can't fully I used to wonder why Brother Hampton just reserved his level of enthusiasm <laughs> because he understood. They're just saying, hold on. They're just, hold on. We, we, we can rejoice on this piece. But we, well, as soon as we get done rejoicing, let's go pray. <laughs> Lord, give them strength when they go home. Keep you on the throne. Keep you on the throne. Next week, they got to make some decisions, Lord. Father, hold on in Jesus' name. Rebuke the devil, Lord. Father, may they not get on the throne and got the devil off. Lord, help them to go into the altar and get sanctified. Saints of God, we got to pray. Lord, Lord, pray for everybody that got saved. Lord, sanctify them. Lord, take them back to the altar. Lord, help them, my God, to don't put self on the throne. Any decision they got to make, they just cry out before God. I came not to do my own will, but like Jesus, the will of the Father. You apprehended me to go and apprehend some stuff. I don't want to stop short of apprehending that for which I was apprehended for. You apprehended me out of sin that I may go apprehend some things the apostle Paul he said my God oh that I may know and he kept going in Philippians 3 he said that I may apprehend that for which I was apprehended for you apprehended me out of sin you broke those spirits you apprehended me out of false religion not to give me a big car not to give me a fancy house not to find sister so and so but you apprehended me that I may go and apprehend some stuff that I may go and tear down some strongholds that I may go and bring some souls in that that I may go and raise up some congregations. Lord, I have to have you on the throne. This is the message. This is the devil's attempt. The devil's attempt is to remove God off the throne in sinner's life and out of the church where we're doing our own thing. We do what we want to do when we want to do it. But we got to pray. Lord, I want to make sure you want to find a successful home. Lord, Burn me up. Burn me up. If my husband is cutting up this and the other, Lord, help me to stay in the spirit and deal with it right. If I got to turn my plate up, Lord, I'm letting you, you that on the throne, you defend. See, well, who's ever, when, when there's someone on the throne, it's their obligation to have dominion. Every enemy that will come in this territory is their obligation to deal with it. When God is on the throne, you don't got to worry about it. That's right. Amen. You ain't got to fight yourself. My God. You don't got to stay up all night. My God, just stay right and keep him on the throne. See, what the devil wants to do is to pull you down so you'll start fighting like they fighting. The devil want to pull you down where you get distracted like they distracted. Now he knows my only hope is to get you off that throne. If you keep God on the throne, if you don't get carnal, if you don't get my God backbiting and texting and posting stuff that's negative and all that, you fighting through all your stuff, you will never win. You don't understand spiritual warfare. You got to be willing to hurt. You got to be dogged out and talked about and mistreated. You can't articulate your position and defend yourself. No, you have to learn to let God defend you. You have to learn to let God fight your battles. You have to learn to be quiet. Ask God for some shut mouth grace. Like the saints of old, Lord, give me some shut mouth grace. Give me the 
grace just to shut my mouth. Jesus, when they came about him, he didn't open his mouth. They can talk about me. They can say I ain't saved. It could be an ain't or a saint. It don't matter. I'm going to keep God on the throne. I've been taught by the old saints. The way for spiritual success is to keep God on the throne. My God. Go to, go to next chapter, 716. Let's just walk through this. Just for a moment, 716, Jesus, read. And Jesus answered them yes. and said, yes. my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. He's, come on. He wasn't even owning the doctrine, the truth he was preaching. He said, he's on the throne. My doctrine is not mine. Read. If any man will do his will, yes. he shall know of the doctrine, yes. whether it be of God yes. or whether I speak of myself. Come on and read. He that speaketh of himself seeks his own hold on, glory. Hold on, hold on. Here, Jesus said, my doctrine is not mine, but him that sent me. God's going to be on the throne for what I preach, what I believe. See, false religion want to keep a name, but they remove God off the throne. My God. In Matthew 121, don't go there. God said, for she shall bring forth a son through the angel to Joseph. She shall bring forth a son. Thou shall call his name Jesus. He's going to save his people from sin. Keep God on the throne. Keep preaching that God saves from sin. Not in sin. That's right, bro. Not leave you a sinner. Amen. Keep God on the throne. My God. Don't remove him off the throne because your board of bishops 122 years ago at a council over in Europe changed the teachings. Why are you going to take God off the throne? Jesus in the 17th chapter of John, he said, Father, sanctify them. He preached sanctification. So how are you going to remove God off the throne because you got some person that can't get rid of the old man, so you're going to bring down the gospel? No. Leave God on the throne. My God. Just because you bring in some young person that got a wife down in Lansing somewhere, and you don't want to keep gathering more people and more people. Listen, we can gather all we want, but we're going to keep God on the throne. Keep him on the throne, brother. We're going to keep him on the throne. We're going to do what God say. What God's words say, that's what we're going to do. And that's what God blesses, my God. I'd rather have four or five where God's on the throne than to have four or five hundred by God. Mass confusion. But one after another, fold it. Fold it. What Jesus said. I'm not going to change myself. I'm not going to come down here and now start preaching my own thing. Everything I'm preaching is his. Look at his judgment. Go over to John 8. It's 16. And yet if I judge, yes. my judgment is true. Come on, read. For I am not alone. Come on. But I am the Father that sent me. Yes. It is also written in your law uh -huh. that the testimony of two men is true. Come on. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. Mm, read. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me, nor my father. <laughs> my Lord. If ye had known me, yes. you should have known my father also. Uh huh. Go back to verse 14. Verse, uh, verse uh, 13. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Yes. Thou bears record of thyself. Come on and read. That record is not true. You just talking about yourself, man. Come on and read. Jesus answered and said unto them. Yes. Though I bear record of myself, uh -huh. yet my record is true. Come on and read. For I know whence I came uh -huh. and whether I go. Yes. But ye cannot tell whether whence I came and whether I go. My Lord. Ye judge after the flesh. Come on. I judge no man. Come on. And yet if I judge... Yes. My judgment is true. My Lord. For I am not alone. Come on. But I am the Father that sent me. Come on. It is also written. Come on. And, he said, I'm not going to just judge myself. I'm leaving him on the throne. Whatever decision I make, I'm going to pray it through. If it offend mama, daddy, granddaddy, great grandfather, whoever else, I'm leaving God on the throne. If you want to have success, you got to judge righteous judgment and have no respected person. That's how Jesus was able to be successful. He said, I'm not going to judge myself. But my judgment comes from the father. If I judge something, I'm going to pray it through and have no respected person whatsoever. Because I'm going to tell you, you get up under somebody's influence. You get up under a spirit somewhere. 
If you get real buddy, buddy, listen, as Brother Hampton taught us eloquently, don't get too close to nobody. Care who you are. You ain't going to get control over me. The moment you get up under somebody's spirit, you will see their true stripes. You will see what they really made out of. And many times the way they get you is to my God remove anybody that they think will be a threat to their influence. Anybody they think will be a threat to their influence, they'll try to undermine them and dog them out and make up stuff and say, see, you can't trust. You don't even know. And they say, da, 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 da. and they say, you know, you don't know who to trust. And they say, good, I got you now. You write my hand. You don't believe. Hey, look, I, I knocked out every prop from around you. Now you agree with me. Everybody's off. Everybody's crazy. Everybody's compromised and messed up. And now they got you just eating all out their hand, this, that, and the other, and don't realize the spirit that they operating from. If they was really spiritual, they wouldn't have to dog and this and the other. They would just pray. Brother Hampton, old brother, never got you in a room and dogged out. Brother such and such and brother such. I don't care if it was one cleansing, three cleansing, or five cleansing. They never got in a room with personal attacks against other people. Because if that's the way you get them, that's the way you got to keep them. If you ever get somebody through a personal room and dog and this and the other, you're going to have to be on pins and needles your whole life and hope they stay with you and hope they stay with you and hope you don't, they don't lose from your influence. And they don't, if they go anywhere, you're going to be, oh, 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 oh. why? Because you didn't get them the right way. You got to pray. You got to get on your knees. You got to hurt. You got to let the Holy Ghost fight your back. I said, Brother Hampton, why ain't she doing that? Why ain't she doing that? They dogging you out. They saying this. They getting numbers. They getting people getting. He said, I am doing something. I can't speak. I got to let the Father fight for me. He's got to stay on the throne. That's how you build a church, son. That's how you build a congregation. You have to keep him on the throne. Hurt, pray, cry, do whatever you do. But you leave him on the throne. Weeping may endure for a night. It may seem like it's dark as a thousand midnights. It may look like you're losing, but you're not losing as long as he's on the throne. Look at uh, verse 29. 829, come on. And he he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Isn't that something, saints? Isn't that something? That's a real powerful, spirit-led life. I do always. Everywhere I go, he's on the throne. Whatever decision. Lord, do I involve myself in this? Lord, what about this? I'm leaving him on the throne. It don't even matter. I always do. Always. The formula, Jesus said, I always do. That which please the Father. The things that please him. Listen to it in this way. I always carry out his assignment. This is not talking about like I always do. Please, if I, I don't do crack. Oh, saints, can you imagine this testimony? He said, I always do. That which please the father. Not that I don't cheat on my wife and I don't. No, 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 no. Some some decisions I got to make. Lord, it's going to hurt. Lord, I don't see the whole staircase. All you show me is the first stair. Oh, Lord, but you're making it clear. This is the way. Lord, I don't see every step, though. Lord, I don't see it. But Jesus said, I always do that which please the Father. Every decision I make. Some people look at things like this. There's a God way, and then there's a sinful way, and then there's like a neutral zone. Where it's not, as long as it ain't sin, you can kind of do what you want to do. That's not what Jesus was talking about here. He was saying, every decision I make, he's on the throne. Not just saints, he's on the throne. We are, he's on the throne dictating. You talking about some power in the church? Power in the home? Power in the congregation? He's on the throne di- orchestrating. Son, one place that he'll leave with his eyes. He don't got to scream and yell. Can you imagine that God is able just to? I used to see my father sometimes. We'd be in the back of the church, maybe doing this and that. He would just. He ain't have to do nothing. That's what God wants. Son, don't pursue that. Sis, don't, don't accept that invitation. He don't got the Holy Ghost. Mm-mm. He just wants somebody to lay with. But ain't no brothers. It ain't no brothers. And if I, and if this may be my only chance, listen, you, you be better off. 
with you and God than to get caught up in something that God didn't lead you in. But Jesus said, the power, and as we come, in, come on in to the church in Revelation, let's close it out. Revelation, go over to, I'm sorry, Luke 10, Luke 10. The assignment of the end time, prophetically. Luke 10, verse 17. Pray for us, saints. Luke 10. And the 70 returned again with joy. I'm hearing my God, saints, praying, asking God for direction. Lord, what about this? Lord, what about that? I'm like, oh, Lord, they, they got God on the throne. Lord, what? I said, there's going to be some power. Lord, what about this? Lord, I, 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 brothers here praying the other night. Lord, we read, we read, we consecrating. We making sure. We doubling down. We ain't making no decision, no nothing. I need every one of my in-laws, cousins. I need them all saved. I need them all on the ark. And the power is going to come from God being expressly on the throne and you operating in his express will. God got gifts. God got power. God got here. It said the 70 returned. And they said they beheld Satan fall from heaven. Go ahead, read this. Read this. We're going to break, break this down. Read. And the 70 returned again with joy. Yes. Saying, Lord. Lord. Even the devils are subject unto my Lord, Lord, yes. thy name. Yes. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan's lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you Okay, power. now, 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 mind you, people talking about devil in the heaven, devil in the earth. That's not what this is talking about. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, over in Acts 19, don't go there. The same thing the apostles did here. They went and they preached. And they had lifted up paganism and these little gods. And they lift up these satanic teachings and all this other stuff. These apostles went and preached. There be no God that be made with hands. There's only one true God. And they declared the gospel. And you've seen the influence that Satan had been lifted up to just falling. And the people, hearts opening up to the gospel. In receiving the message, God performing, opening up eyes, God blessing this, that, and the other. And they said, my God, we beseled Satan, uh, Satan falling as a star, as lightning fall from heaven. He was brought down quickly. We preached the gospel. Amen. The apostles did the same thing. They said, my God, there be no God made with hand. They took their arts. They took all these little statues, and they began to burn them. And then my God, the, the silversmith and all of them got upset. So they messing up our money. Why? Because they up here burning their curious arts. They're doing this and the other. My God, the what? They was putting God back on the throne. They were saying, no, this stuff that y'all put on the throne, this stuff that y'all praying to, this stuff that y'all believing in, no, 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 no. There is only one God, the one true God, the creator God. He sent his son Jesus to earth. Jesus is now here. The Messiah is here. And they beheld Satan falling. They began to preach the gospel. People began to take stands. They began to receive Christ into their hearts. The apostles did the same thing. And they said, my God, oh, they went to Mars Hill and they preached the gospel. One after another began to get saved. Thousands began to get saved. Thousands. Why? Because they began to put God back on the throne. That was their message. And that's the same message today. We must put God back on the throne. Even in Revelation 11 chapter, don't go there. In verse number three, it said he saw the two witnesses. My God, the word and the spirit that dictate the affairs of the church. He saw them, my God. They were mourning. They were mourning. Why? Because they took God off the throne and they put this man called the Pope. They put him up on the throne and they allowed him to dictate him to say, don't you realize that God, amen, he determines my God. It said that God, if a person uh, uh, passes away and they're not saved, amen, the Bible said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, my God. Amen. Uh, the Bible said in Proverbs 9, 27, uh, 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 for it is appointed unto men once to die and after that the judgment. In other words, God said, once you die, you go into the judgment and how you die, you live. Well, the Pope comes in because they put him on the throne replacing God. He says if they died and they weren't right, then I'll create this place called purgatory and I'll allow them to go there. And if you give me enough money, I'll let them out of purgatory and I'll let them go to heaven. They remove God from the throne and they put a man on the throne. He decided, my God, if they got married in God's words, 
said, to death do you part. If you give me enough chickens, if you give me enough cows, then I'll annul it. I'll say that the, 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 the church can write it off and say, it never happened. happened. My God, if God, enough God and man, my God, what God have joined together, let not man, if it's a doctor downtown, if it's a lawyer or the Pope, you can't undo what God has done. Who in the world do you think you are? We don't got to go to you to be forgiven. Come to us. Say five Hail Marys and you are forgiven. Who are you to forgive? You ain't got, you didn't shed your blood. What shall wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're not going to put no Pope my or God, my God, my no, God, no Cardinals or anybody else up on the throne. We're going to put God. God. Amen. Amen. My God. Six verse later. God who reigns. It said that the they, two witnesses, were mourning. Now it said they lay dead in the street. Why? Because Protestantism makes an image to the beast that it just left. They just left that. And now they're going to make an image and become just another version, lighter version of it. They're going to start lifting up man just like they lifted up man. They're going to put together this board of bishops, this and the other, that dictates the affairs of the church. That this, that. Hold on. When they had power in the church and they needed to make a decision, the ministry got on their knees and prayed. And they said, the Holy Ghost has said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. The Holy Ghost said this, that. the Holy Ghost said this, that. and God opened up blinded eyes. God delivered from all men of sin. God, my God, cast out demons and devils. People they thought was crazy, was demon possessed. My God. But because God was on the throne. There was real power there. They were able to clothe that man in his right mind. My God. So here, under Protestantism, who basically did the same thing Catholicism did, just a lighter version of it. The scriptures say live holy, but they have a book of discipline saying our church don't teach that. Who in the world is you? you in, when did you die and have a church? It's only one church. It's God's church. Here you got teachings that are completely unbiblical. You replace God off the throne. Just like they did. And no more, more power. A form. Go to church, say this, that, and the other. But to really get that spirit you got out of you, you're going to die with that spirit unless you find and come in contact with some truth that still got God on the throne because that's only where you're going to get your deliverance at. You read down to about the 11th verse. It said... But oh, they got up on their feet. The word and the spirit. They got back up on their feet. God put together in the hearts of some men and women. If we don't have a church in this end time, we got to figure out a way to put God back up on the throne. Every time they tried to clean up a church they were in, the infrastructure power systems of that church would raise his ugly head and say, you can't do this. Who are you? You can't do that. So God sent a message out to the brethren. Back to the blessed old Bible. Put me, anytime Israel got off, they began to bring in other teachings and worship other things that God would raise up a prophet. That prophet would dust off the old books, dust off the old rolls. My God, dust off the old teachings and say, hold on. The reason why we can't stand in front of our enemies, the reason why we're facing all this calamity is because we got away from the book. We got away from the book. We got to get back. My God, they would put on sackcloth, ashes, and they would weep and pray and say, prophet, we submit. We're going to put God back on the throne. The God raised up some men and women, and they said all they were in their songs was back to the blessed old Bible. Put God back up on the throne. Amen. I appreciate man. Or well, man told me my baptism when I was a baby. I was baptized as a little child. Well, the Bible said he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. When did you have the capacity to understand that Jesus came to earth, died on the cross, that you are a sinful person? And my God, you need to repent. My God, ask God to forgive you from all your sins. Profess faith in Jesus Christ. Humble yourself and give your life to God, which is called, as he told Nicodemus, being born again. No 
child understands that. No child even feels conviction from sin. The apostle Paul said, for I was alive without the law once. But when sin revived, I came, my God. In other words, what? I didn't understand. I was too young to understand the things I was doing was sinful. But when the life came, understanding came, then I died. The wages of sin is death. I can't rest upon this child baptism. We got to get back to the, put God back on the throne. My God. Amen. Put God back on the throne. We got to live holy. Put God back on the throne. And they did. And you read verse 19. It says signs and wonders. They didn't decide. Uh, you, could, you take this assignment over here. You got this position in the church because your great grandfather had it. So we're going to give it to you. That's babbling. This is spirit led and word led. Don't come with nothing different. If you, you better keep God on the throne. You better not have no church politics. You better put God back on the throne. Don't you get behind no church politics. Put God back on the throne. If you want power, if you want folks to get saved, if you want some folks to be healed, you better make sure, you better fight. Keep God on the throne. Don't come with nothing different. Don't mess with it. I don't care. We can, we can stand to lose any of us. None of us are in, uh, 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 irreplaceable. Like we just got to have you. We appreciate you. We appreciate me. But none of us are irreplaceable. But God being on the throne is irreplaceable. We cannot have any success. Nobody getting saved. Nobody getting healed. Amen. This in time, our consecration My God. must go to that next level. Where we're saying, Lord, whatever you want to do with me, I'm surrendering. Every person, every new convert, everybody is seeking the fullness of God. Everybody is seeking their place in the body. Everybody is seeking their gifting. Everybody is seeking their anointing. And he said, if you do this, he said, if I be lifted up, y'all mess around and do that. Y'all mess around and say, Lord, everywhere in my life. I'm rededicating, reconsecrating to you. You dictate the affairs of my life. You lead me, I'll go. You say, stop, I'll stop. Lord, you want me to go to school, I'll go. Stop, I'll stop. Whatever you want to do, work here, work there. Come off, come off. Whatever you want, right through here, we got to bring in the end time glory. And the early morning church had this power, had this anointing, this glory, because they made sure they kept God on the throne and the glory of this latter house. Not because we don't get high, not because we don't do drugs, not because we got saved, but the glory of this latter house will be greater. My God. Because we put God back on the throne. The church, our homes, our life, our nation. Shall we stand? My Lord. We pray that somebody sees their life and say, my problem is not this, that, or the other, but my problem is that I removed God from the throne. Now I got babies out of wedlock. I'm dealing with this problem and that problem. Financial issues, family issues. Our children are going through, our families are going through. But their real solution is to humble themselves. You can pray for your grandchildren all you want. You can pray for your children all you want. But the only real hope is to put God back on the throne. Amen. You need to call them this evening and say, I got, I, I got a word for you. I got a solution for you. If you humble yourself and just allow God. He'll bless you, he'll lead you, he'll guide you in a real way. Every head bow, every head bow. Father, we thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. We appreciate you, dear God, for what you're doing in the camp. Thank you how in this end time, dear God, it's all about you. Father, you've shut the world down so that they could hear from you. And Lord, the crux of the message is, put me back on the throne. America, put me back on the throne. Church world, put me, put me. Father, we just pray, dear God, for the souls that are not saved under the sound of our voice. Father, we're seeing more and more saints' children tune in. Father, they're tuning in to hear a word from God. 
And we pray they receive this word this morning. Put God back on the throne. This is your message. This is the message. It'll work out. It's proven. Everywhere and everyone that's ever had the humility to say, Lord, I humble myself. God is blessed. Bless the congregation. Bless each one of us. Father, dear God, just to examine our own selves. Father, we want you on the throne completely dictating the affairs of our life. Every decision that we make, Father, is going to impact the glory negatively or positively. We are all connected. We need every one of us to be sold out to the hilt. We need every new convert to go on to get sanctified fully, burning up all flesh whatsoever. Let it all go. You gave up sin. Now give up you. Give up self. Don't you get on there. But let God just burn you up to do what he want to do. Father, we pray, dear God, that you would just bless each one of us to do our part to share the message. We thank you, dear God, for the cause. We thank you, dear God, for the invitations that are going out. Thank you, dear God, for the media ministry. Father, we're just asking that you just continue to help us to be in tune with you. You're doing something different. We will not get this if we're too busy. We will not get this if we're rushing through prayer, if we're rushing through our fasting just to get through it. But Lord, we want to be in tune with you. You're on the throne and we want you to dictate what would you have for us to do? We could have just shut the church down. We could have just kept on going, rebuke, forget social. We, we could have just, we could have done this, we could have done that, and we would have been messed up. How many souls not saved? How many souls this, then, and we could all have coronavirus and everything else? Why? Because we didn't follow God. We did not follow God. We just did what we wanted. We were just defiant. Or we just made some decision. But Lord, right through here, we don't want to make no decisions that God is not making. As long as we tap into your perfect will, there's power, there's healing, Lord. There's some bodies we still need to be healed. Some folk, we need to get about wheelchairs, Lord. And Father, that power comes when there is a people that forsakes all sin, that completely consecrates, and then live with this mindset. God is on the throne. He leads, guides, and directs every decision, everything we do. And Lord, we could not help but have glory and more glory. Thank you so much for what you're doing, Lord. We appreciate you so much for the saints. Have your divine way. In Jesus' name, amen. Just one verse of song. What we got? Page 358, page 358. What's the name of that? We'll make one last plea to some sinner to come home. If you want to come, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God. Lord, I'm putting you back on the throne of my heart. Give me another verse if you wouldn't mind. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot. To thee whose blood Cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God. I'm putting you back on the throne, Lord. Any words, any reflections, or any moment, acknowledge the guest. There are several praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. God is doing something, saints. I'm seeing couples. I'm seeing it's single saints. To said, I'm going to that next level. I'm going to that next level. I'm making sure God is on the throne in my life. My children need to be saved. I need to go to another level of God. I'm not going to be relaxed where I'm at, Brother Lee. I'm just seeing and hearing good, good, good inspiration. 
folks just putting God on that throne right in the center. Just say, Amber, I'm hearing about you. You keep it up. And you keep it up. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Sister Quita, that fire. You got one of your nephews, another nephew, Sister Quita. What are you doing? My Lord. How are you coming, Sister Quita? You coming again? Come again? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Quita, if you could give me one more. He about 15 feet in front of you. If you could just pray one more in. If you could just pray, if you could just pray one more in. If you could just pray one more and just say, Lord, it's been 85 years. But I'm putting you on the throne. Lord, I only have a few days left. My God, saints of God, I think we all may need to take an hour. When y'all see John Willis walk into the altar. When y'all see John Willis walk down to that altar. My Lord is saying, Lord, I'm putting you on the throne. All right. We appreciate you, saints. You've been an amazing audience. Lord bless you, Richard. You are dismissed in the name of the Lord. Thank you.